Hi, I'm Tony Hawk. Welcome back to The Letters. I'm your host, Jeff Grosso. We're here with Tony Hawk to talk about nerdism. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> no, to talk about skating, man. Like, you see all kinds of pieces on you for all kinds of various reasons. The icon, all this kind of stuff. And we just wanted to <clears throat> sit down and, and nerd out. Like, so when did you start competing and stuff? Like, how, how long from, like, when you started and, like, got into competition, uh, got sponsored, all that? I got into, well, you know, it was like, you had to compete to, to be recognized to do anything. To have any validity in skateboarding, yeah. you had to compete, right? Um, so I entered contests right away. I was like, oh, this is what you do. Right at the end of Oasis Days, I got sponsored by Dogtown. Amazing so my, my first sponsored setup was Mike Smith's Hand Me Down, <laughs> which was um, a Dogtown triplane, indies, and uh, blood wheels. Yes. Blood revolvers were <clears throat> fucking awesome. You're going to have to look up Fred Blood and show, Fred him, Blood, yeah. show him doing 540s. A 540, look at the height on that one. He's cooking. As an Ollie Air. Yeah. <laughs> When I got on Dogtown, Mike Smith was the pro. What people don't realize about Mike was that he wasn't trying to create a new style or a movement, it's just the way he did things. Yeah. And so for his inverts, the way he tweaked them, it was just the way that he liked to do it. Yeah. And it was so unique, it was like, that's how Mike Smith does inverts, that's a Smith version. Oh yeah, Smith stops. Yeah, because everybody, everybody thinks it was a Smith grind and it wasn't. He got the Smith stop cover on the purple yep. thrasher. He just go up and he just lock in and stop and stand there and look cool and then fall back in. Everyone's like Smith stop, <clears throat> Smith stop, fucking badass. And Losi was the one. And then you can go back even further with Shreddy and and some of the other guys, you know, and Olsen and all those guys will sit there and go. I got him in the world of Grasso now. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you just brought up Shreddy Repos? Yeah, well, because wow. Shreddy will fucking go <laughs> Shreddy will go fucking <clears throat> ballistic because he's really the first guy to like lock in and go, right? And yeah, yeah. If I had to go through who inspired me through my life, Eddie Alguera, first and foremost, frontside rock, one footed airs. Like, I, I had to learn Eddie's tricks. I was looking in a magazine as a kid. All I cared about was tricks, and he was the guy making up the tricks. Caballero, obviously. Uh, was a huge pioneer of so many vert tricks. Yeah, fuck dude, Ca Caballero, frontside bonus ones, backside bonus ones on vert. Hey, frontside board slide. Gons, obviously, you know, was the pioneer of true street skating as far as anyone's concerned. I mean, I know I'm just going for the big names, but I was right there and those were the guys. Yeah, for sure. Rodney changed the world with his little flippy weird tricks on flat ground that we couldn't really comprehend them, but we knew something was there. Yeah. Like you have to understand, freestyle contest then, there was the ver there was the bowl contest, and then the freestyle contest happened, and it was just chaos, and people were jumping around and doing spacewalks and whatever, and then they'd call Rodney Mullen's name, and everyone would stop what they're doing and come down to the freestyle area and watch. Christian brought style and height. Showmanship. And showmanship, yeah. Yeah. I wanted any of my tricks to look like Christian's. Danny, Danny brought street skating to Vert. Skating with Bucky and Bob through those years, like the stuff that, that was created in say, the early 2000s were stuff that I was so, I was so thankful to be part of, but also to witness. And, and nowadays, I can't, you know, there's just so much. It's, <laughs> the, the, the gates are flooded, what can I say? Stacy Peralta called me and said, hey, I heard uh, Dogtown went out of business. And I was like, 
that must be why I haven't gotten any skateboards lately. So then I was on Powell and um, suddenly I'm skating with McGill and Cab and it was all just kind of overwhelming. I was a Del Mar local, right? Yeah. From that point on. The crew there was, it used to be Kevin, he moved to Arizona, um, Owen Nieder, uh, Ken Park, Stedham, um, Reese Simpson, uh, Alan Losey sometimes, Thing. Swank. Also, you know, the guys who worked there, Grant, Swift. Yeah, I'm leaving all kinds of uh, yeah. people out. It was fun, man. It was just, it was nonstop. You know, Lester and I used to skate a lot together and he was super progressive. I mean, Lester was the second guy to do McTwist. When the McTwist though. came out, Mike, it was his signature. He did it. He flipped it. It was a McTwist. That's gymnastics. Like, yeah. I don't know what is going on there. Then Lester learned it. He did it the proper. Dr the drill bit. Yeah. But he did, like, yeah. McTwist it, right? Yeah. And then he I learned it. And mine was, mine was straight up flat spin just because I didn't really understand how to go upside down. And then that became, like, yeah, that's a backside 540. Like, that's not really a McTwist. Back to Vera, you know, when I did that, I was doing it halfway up. I was grabbing Stelmaski to get it around. Yeah. And I was in whatever, Aspo Castle, and people were just like. All right, and that'll be time for Tony Hawk. He's improved immensely throughout this series. Yes! Oh, like, out, out of all your contributions, out of all the stuff you've done, like, is there... Is there a handful of stuff that you're like, fuck yeah, that one, that one's mine? You mean for for tricks? Yeah, just, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, like, maybe the tricks that I'm most proud of are just more like stuff that I feel like broke through some perceived barrier, like an Ollie 540. When I first started trying that, it was a joke. Even the frontside 540, like I, I was just trying to copy Billy Ruff doing a unit, and then at one point I went too high and missed my hand, and saw the landing and I was like, oh, I could do that without putting my hand down and eventually did it. And even then, like it was in a Powell ad, but didn't really resonate. Uh, the first thing, I, I remember you showing up to Whittier and everybody was doing fakie thrusters, fakie foot plants, and, and you did them grabbing fronts at air. And you'd like pop them into your hand and grab fronts at air. Oh yeah, yeah. And go back in and, and then you split. And then after you split, we all learned them. <laughs> You think Madonna knows she's got a trick named after her? <laughs> I don't know. And if she does know, do you think she's stoked? <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, just so you know, One Footed Air is like, that was Mickey Albos. Yes. I watched him do it, and then I was like, oh my God, he's taking his foot off. And yeah. I just learned how to kick it, it further in yeah, the other where, direction where and stuff, so. Where he'd wiggle his foot. All the One Footed stuff was happening. Mm -hmm. I did a One Footed Lena Tail. And it was like, why did that keep going? And when I did it, like, I didn't do it the way people did it. I was just, like, barely getting my foot off, you know, hitting my tail, like. You're the first guy to do them, and then it takes somebody like, J you know, Jason Jesse standing off to the side. He's watching you, and he's like, fuck, that's cool. I'm going to do that. And yeah. now all of us yeah, want to do it. Yeah, that's the You know, like. If we can make it look anything like that, then yeah. let's do it. The, the, the first trick that I ever did that anyone took notice of was, what do we call it? Half cab frontside crock. Yeah. And I'll never forget, I looked over maybe 10 minutes later and Eddie Alguera is in the brown bowl trying my trick. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, Eddie Alguera is trying the trick that I did. Like, that, <laughs> that was to me, badass. was a huge deal. I know you were really close friends with Ray Underhill. It'd be mm -hmm. rad to dig out some footage of Ray. Oh, absolutely. I mean, not a ton, Ray, Well, you know, Ray, Ray really, well, for one, Ray just took the chance. Drove from Tennessee to California <laughs> on a wing and a prayer. He did, st he did stale fish fronts of inverts, I think. Yep. My dad, uh, well, first thing, my dad was, was much older. He was 43 when he had me. And so, ended up in San Diego because he was in the Navy. Skaters right now remind me a lot of aviators used to be. You knew you were in an elite group. He was really supportive because he thought I finally found something that I really wanted to do all the time, like that I, that I love doing and I wanted to get better at. And then he saw how the skate industry was waning mostly just because there was no organization. Yeah. 
And so he took it upon himself to like start a competition organization. He saw a bunch of ragtag kids like us, outcasts, that found a sense of belonging and had no support. Yeah. And so he was like, let's, let's get it together. And then, you know, and he had a militant background, literally a militant background. So he rubbed people the wrong way. We definitely took your dad for granted. What your dad did for us was really, really cool. So he, did he, I. He, I mean, that, that was, yeah, hard. He was, it was, he was, it was hard to be the, the sort of target of all of that anger too, because it was like, well, there's favoritism, you know, the finals are at Del Mar and he's Tony's kid, you know, he's yeah. Tony's his kid. And then it was like, and then it was like, I started to sort of grow up and then I was becoming my own man, teenager, whatever. Yeah. And my dad is at all the events. Yeah. You know, so I had to make mm. this like very concerted separation from him um, in those days and it got super hard. And actually like it came to a head a couple times where I was like, I don't want you to do this anymore. It's absurd that we have been able to be a part of this and see it come from such ridiculously humble beginnings and, and something that was just our outlet. And we had no idea if there was a future in it. We didn't care if there was a future in it. We just yeah. did it because it spoke to us and we loved, we loved the freedom it gave us. If someone were to really have documented a contest back then, like Lopes Ramp, Shut Up and Skate, it would have been like, are you guys serious? Do you really think this is a competition? Yeah. And we were just hyped to all get together. You know, it wasn't even like, it wasn't that we wanted to beat each other. It was just more like, we all get to, this is sick. This guy has a ramp in his backyard. It's insane. Yeah. All of a sudden, fast forward 40 years. Yeah. And it's this billion dollar industry and it's in the Olympics and there's televised competition and there's huge sponsorship, you know, and none of that stuff was ever in the plan. No. We weren't trying to make this thing that was like, trying to make our this is laugh. the next thing, this is cool. We were just trying to find something that spoke to us and, and we found our community and was like, this is, this is where I belong. Yeah. This is it. And I don't even care if you don't like it. Yeah. I don't care if you want in, like we, we got it. Yeah, just like, you, you know, if, if you want in, fucking come on in and play. Yeah, come try, like, yeah. You know, but give it a try. Don't <laughs> yeah. just come in with the gear. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for doing this. Hey, I appreciate thanks for having it. me. I think we got, um, I'm not gonna lie, when you told me you want to do something that was focused on me, I was like, oh, here we go, bagel bites. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Hawk, could you, like, share? No way. <laughs> <laughs> X game. Thanks for watching the letters. Thanks for including me in the letters. Tony Hawk, totally fucking awesome. Turn this shit off and go skate. Go hang out with your friends. Learn proper bean plants. Learn proper bean plants. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Yeah, man. That was always Tom. It's more fun for me to see where the skating is coming from that already have these scenes, you know, that weren't there because of some Olympic push, which are like Cambodia. You know, Skatistan started a project in Cambodia. There, there are a couple girls that are ripping in Cambodia. There's a full thriving skate scene in Ethiopia that I've actually been there. And, you know, there could be a legitimate hardcore team coming out of Ethiopia. That would rule. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, that would rule. That's the silver lining to all of this, all of this international success, I think. At the, at the end of the day, like, you know, it's a toy. It's a toy for children. And, as, and the, kids, the kids are, are always the equalizing factor. It can't be corrupted. It, you can't fuck with that. You fuck with everything else but she can't fuck with the kids just having a good time in the corner. It's still Saturday night and you still have no pants on. Season nine, click here.